We're in Luke chapter 2, like I said towards the end of it, verse 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Whoa, so it's kind of a strange little story tucked in here, right? It's the only story that we hear about Jesus being not a baby and not an adult, that he's somewhere in the middle here. And we know specifically here that he's 12, and it's the only time that we hear about him growing up. So there's a lot of things that we can take from this. First, we know that Jesus had to learn from others. Hebrews says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more you see now that you see the day approaching. Now, especially, there's a million excuses not to connect with people, right? We're not getting together. We're not in large groups. We're trying to stay safe and do everything that we can. And it's easy to not connect with each other. But right now, it's too easy to connect, right? With everything that we have and everything that's been coming out this year, it's too easy to keep spurring each other on. With the technology and the time that we have, there's no reason to stop meeting together. So don't. Don't think it's easier to stay in your house and try to live in a vacuum. Even Jesus had to come to the temple during a festival in the midst of crowds to learn more. This is the time in Jesus' life where he started doing more than just following the law. He started to develop his own relationship with God. It's kind of funny to me that he's 12 years old and his parents aren't there telling him what to do and he can do whatever he wants, right? There's parties going on. There's lots of people. There's food. It's a whole festival and he is sitting in a room learning. Like, what would you be doing if you were on your own in this festival? Would you be at the temple learning when you're home and you have extra time? Are you in your Bible learning? Are you in prayer when you drive? Are you seeking godly counsel when you have questions? Acts tells us, so they should seek the Lord. They should seek the Lord in the hope that they might reach for him and find him because he is not far from us. Are you putting in the time and the effort to have a real relationship with God? Because he's there. He's reaching for you. He's waiting for you to come into the temple and to sit with him. Jesus knew that he needed more than the laws that his parents were, had taught him. He knew that he needed more than his parents' relationship with God. He needed to learn and really understand God for himself. Jesus stayed in the temple and told his parents that it was because he was about his father's business. Jesus wasn't just talking or giving excuses to his parents. He was explaining his call. And his call is also our call, right? We know that when he's saying that he's about his father's business, that that's what we're about. He started at 12 and he figured it out to be about his father's business, to be about this coming kingdom. Jesus understood at 12 what some of us are trying to figure out right now, right? Like what I'm trying to figure out right now. Why are you searching for me? He said, did you not know I would be in my father's house? He already knew that he didn't have to run around the country right now. He didn't have to do all of these great big things today. He didn't have to go and be preaching the world's best sermons or be healing the blind right now. He just needed to be in his father's house. At times we've made this place, our church, the temple that Jesus was going to, his father's house, sometimes we've made it into other things, right? Sometimes we've turned it into things of the world that... It's now just a fashion show to show off what you have or how much you have. It's turned into a place where you could come to judge people because they sin differently than you. It's somewhere that we go to hear the latest gossip. 
But that's not what this place is. That's not what it should be, and we know that. That's not what this community of believers is about. This is a place we get to come and just be. Just be who we are, exactly where we are. We get to come and learn and listen and share as we spur each other on. Sometimes we get too big for our britches, and I think this story reminds us to calm down a little bit. We do, right? We think that we know best, and we don't just sit in the Father's house learning. We go out, we say things, we make choices, we're giving advice, we are making big decisions because we know things. We know all the things. We change things in our life to make ourselves more happier, we make decisions, and we make our own happiness because we can do that. We're grown. We're 12 years old. We know things. If we keep chasing this happiness that we make for ourselves, if we keep thinking that we know what's best, that we can do it on our own, if we don't stop and just sit in the Father's house, we're never going to reach the places that God has for us. We're never going to reach all of the potential that God has put inside of us. So don't just keep walking because that was your plan. Don't walk all day long and realize that you left Jesus at the temple. I read a scripture last week that I started to hear a little bit differently. It says, I'm the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. He's talking about us bearing fruit, right? We know who we are in this story. We know that we're the ones that bear fruit. And sometimes I think like, oh, what have I done what is the fruit that I have bared? What, what am I doing? Look at all my fruit. What are the things that I can do to bear more fruit? How come I'm not bearing more fruit? I need to figure this out. I need to figure out how to do this better. I need to figure out how to love more. I need to figure out how to show more grace. I need to figure out how to be better and love others better. But don't stop reading here. It says, remain in me and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Guys, the command isn't to bear fruit. The command isn't to figure out how to be better or how to bear more fruit. He isn't commanding us to do more and be better and love bigger and to be this different person that we don't know. That's not what he's telling us. He's not telling us to figure out how to be happy by all means necessary. The command is to remain. When we remain, when we abide in our Father's house, when we stop saying that we know what's better— When we just sit in the temple, when we remain, that's when we bear fruit. We bear fruit when and only when we are grafted to the vine. We can be trying to do that and we can be bearing fruit and we can be showing all of these good things and following all of the rules the way that we're supposed to. And we can lose the presence of God and not even realize it. Deuteronomy says, I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels or rulers nor things present or things to come, neither the powers of height or the depth of anything else in all of creation, even 2020, can separate us from the love of God. He's waiting for you in the temple. He loves you and he wants you. Jesus is showing us in the story how easy it is just to sit in his father's house just to sit and to be in the presence of God, to be about the coming kingdom, to be about our Father's business.